paying board to paying thanks. Our advice panel is here to listen and guide. Today we have Mark Wilson, Jeanette McDonald, and Jill Darcy. Guys, welcome to the show. We're going to move straight to our first email. My second husband, daughter from first marriage, and I live in, in my home. My husband thinks my daughter should be paying board while she's studying, but I don't want to. Uh, I don't want her to feel she has to pay uh, to be in her home. My husband moved into the house where I raised my daughter. I think it would be would cause extra tension, and we don't really need the money. What should I do? This is from Janine in Wellington. Mark, your thoughts? Because um, you have teenage daughters. Uh, I do indeed. I face <laughs> this, this question. He's about thirty. <laughs> I started young. Um, but I think actually the key to this is actually in the letter, which is we don't want her to feel like she has to pay to be in our house. So my question is, what is what is the function of this? Why would you want your daughter to pay? And there are lots of actually very positive reasons that you might want to do that. I assume at some point she's going to move out. She's mm-hmm. going to move into her own place. And part of our job as parents, we're obliged to actually provide our kids with the skills that will enable them to do that. So there are things that, that daughters and, and sons can do other than paying money, which will help, right. help around the house and will develop those skills. My advice is that um, if you really want to teach your daughter to help her learn money management, then maybe suggest to her that she could save that money. If she doesn't feel confident she can do that, save it on her behalf, potentially. So at some point, give it back. It's not like she's just lounging around. She could use that money in the future to mortgage, buy a car, pay off a student loan. As long as she gets that money back, Jill. <laughs> Well, I suppose for me, this is very much one of those examples of the complex family that I talk about so often. Mm. And so for me, it's really about being able to sit down and understand how you communicate with the stepdad who's wanting this financial pressure. Mm. Because it's the emotional torn feeling that the mum's feeling between the daughter and between the, Mm. the love of her new husband. And it's a really tricky one for families. So I would say, why are you expecting her to pay board? Mm. If she's studying, ground rules for me are if you're studying and you're diligent, you're not just partying mm. and it's an excuse, That's right. you don't you don't have to pay. If you have a full-time job, you pay board mm. because you're earning. And so that's very much those base ground rules that I suppose I work from. Mm. Maybe there's an underlying issue there between the other relationship, Jenny? Exactly, Monto. And I agree with everything you said. But I think men are very territorial and I'm wondering whether your new husband uh, has got kids at all and your love for your daughter, and it's all subliminal, I reckon. You love your daughter, she's in the house, and men don't need much in my... Experience? Unyouthful experience to be discombobulated. So he probably doesn't like the daughter um, and is just stirring the pot. It is absolutely none of his business. It's your house, he's moved in, Mm. and your daughter, who you love, is studying, quite right. Um, you can kind of lighten the, don't tell them to butt out, and I don't get aggressive. If you have the sort of, uh, um, if you have a reasonably sophisticated relationship with your daughter, and she knows what's going on, you can explain to her quietly that this is going down, and if she would make an extra effort to be nice to your hubby, or, mm. you know, but um, it's it's a very difficult area. He's come charging in, yeah. and now he just wants you for himself. And if there's this daughter... He's aware of that, though. Maybe the daughter could go around saying, well, I'm keeping you both in your old age, and, you know, when I'm a successful whatever accountant or whatever she's... Please don't let her be going to film or drama school. <laughs> <laughs> no prospect of owning your own home there, but whatever she's doing, um, she can she kind of reinforce that she's not... Um, Freeloading? Freeloading. Yeah. Mm. But you have a different perspective on this. Well, my mum, when we were growing up, um, it wasn't until I started work that uh, we started paying board, which was 50 or $60. And I appreciated my mum for doing that because when I left uh, home, I was prepared to, for, mm. the, for the world. I was prepared mm. to put aside that money to pay for rent. Obviously, it would have been a little bit more, but mm. I just think if she's studying... Let her study and concentrate on that because she's still got a straight student loan that she's going to pay for as well. That's not what you said before. Well, what did I say before? <laughs> you said she should pay and I did and it was, you know... we we'll move to our next email. <laughs> <laughs> My parents are visiting from overseas. Now that I'm seeing Dad every day, I strongly suspect he's an alcoholic. Mum has thought this for a while but hasn't wanted to confront him. How do we broach this with, uh, with the family? This is from Sharon in Christchurch. We'll start with you, Jill. Difficult because that 
that is an underlying issue that's there that sometimes has to come out. Mm. And really this is back, back to the art of communication and how do you talk about these really touchy subjects. And I would say that um, it's a good idea to at least have that conversation with your mother. It, is he under stress? Is there another underlying reason that's causing this? Mm. And then if you're going to have a conversation, have the conversation on that on that compassionate side, not mm. from a judgment. What's your intention here? Your intention is to help. It's not to condemn. It's not to judge. So open it up and see what happens. Jeanette? Well, yeah, um, you're quite right, and you're very wise, aren't you? You <laughs> to know a lot. Um, in my, in, again, in my experience, uh, <coughs> from people I know, people would rather be labelled certifiably mad than the A word. For some reason, mm. alcoholic is... People go, no, I'm not an alcoholic. So the last thing you do is say, Dad, you're an alcoholic. Mm. There is a place, a, a thing you can ring called Al Anon, A-L hyphen Anon, which is there specifically for relatives of alcoholics or suspected alcoholics, and they will give you kind of tools to mm. to deal with it. There's also, um, uh, you can ring Alcoholics Anonymous, and the people there are very switched on. And... Um, they sometimes provide sort of a mentor person. Uh, I was going to say, the best way around this is if you know someone who's a recovering, well, alcoholics say they're, they're always an alcoholic, but someone who's an alcoholic who doesn't drink, mm. you can have them around while Dad's there. Then they're the person, in an ideal circumstance, to take Dad aside and say, look, I'm an alcoholic man and so well, are wouldn't, you. Wouldn't you, don't you think he'd be, he may feel quite intimidated by that? Well, well yes, but um, the trouble is with alcoholism, it's, it, 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 it affects so many other people mm. because, you know, behavioural changes. But I also think they're the kind of people who become alcoholics sideways, like they do have underlying emotional problems mm. and then they get nervous and they have far too many mm. things to drink before and then they become offensive. I mean, we don't know... Your dad might just sit in the corner drinking and being a bit yeah. surly, but it's mm. hard to tell. Yeah. Mark? I, I absolutely agree with the two of you. Firstly, if you, when you broach this, it needs to be in the context of a caring relationship. Mm. Dad, I'm doing this because I'm worried about you. The moment you start getting judgmental, that's going to be a real problem. Most people who have uh, a substance problem already have a pretty good idea that they do. Now, that very rarely makes people feel good about themselves. Mm. And that's why people react defensively and deny that sort of thing. So you have to be real careful how you approach this. Excellent concrete suggestions on where to actually go for advice. And I'll add one last one, which is New Zealand's the Alcohol Advisory Council. New Zealand has a website, alcohol.org.nz. And that has, that, that has a lot of the adverts we've seen on TV. Yeah. You know, um, which, which are brilliant. Provide, which are very good ones. And again, they do exactly what we're talking about, which is trying to broach this in the context of actually caring about someone. And that actually has some concrete advice on what you might do. Firstly, to find out whether or not there is an issue. Mm. Um, and and it, you might be wrong, for example. Um, if, you, if, you, if you drink more than about 21 standard drinks in a week, then actually you probably are at risk of, of a serious problem. It's important to know that there is, for some people, there isn't a safe level uh, of alcohol. But go to these places, find out what you can. Brilliant. You can lead a horse to water, but he might still hit the turps. Way to finish it off there, Jeanette. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your advice today. Very, very good.